welcome back for part two of this two-part series in communication with birth families. In the first part, I talked about our communication with birth families um, in terms of foster care. And in this part, I'm going to talk about our communication with the birth family of our adopted son. So pardon the way that I am laying in bed here. Uh, my kiddo actually fell back asleep while I was filming part one and he's laying kind of awkwardly on the bed and I have just a little bit of area left. I know um, once I get up he's going to start crying and I really want to get this video recorded so I'm going to stay here. Um, also my back is very sore from the way I was sitting during the first part of this when I was recording so I am kind of half laying down, half sitting up, and it looks really awkward, I noticed, in the screen. So our communication is more atypical with birth family than most um, cases of adoption and bio family and adoptive family communication, I think. Um, I do know some adoptive families. I don't really know um, many adopted families terms in f in the realm of like how they communicate with each other if there even is communication so for us in terms of communication prior to our adoption we have never had any type of contact or communication with our kiddos birth mom she um desired for him to be adopted and she kind of just accepted that and i think it was easier for her um to just not have any type of communication. So I met her once at a paternity testing and I have never talked to her or seen her since then. Uh, in terms of his birth father, we had what I would call minimal contact with him in the very beginning when he got involved in the case and was given the okay. Um, he There was more contact and then um, that kind of fizzled out and then there would just be really random contact in between then and now I have had no contact with him since the time right around when we started the TPR process. Um, obviously I saw him in court but I didn't really talk to him or anything and I received a text message during that process from him but other than that it had been a while since I'd had any contact with him either. And so like I said, that contact has been pretty minimal. So you're asking, why am I making this video then if we don't have contact with either of his, his birth parents? During his case, there was a grandmother who um, was very interested in knowing how our kiddo was doing. Um, but she did not wish to take placement of our kiddo. Um, she um, just was not in that time of her life anymore. She had um, a lot of other things going on, and it just um, was not possible for her to take placement of our kiddo. And so her request was just that she stay updated on him and his health and how things were going. And so um, you know, they'd gotten permission from the birth parent to maintain contact with um, this fam with this grandmother and to allow them to give her updates. So I would say probably for the first year of our kiddos um, stay here in his life, all of that contact went through the social workers. After the first year, they were getting to the point where they were going to, um, they were just waiting out the, the time frame for um, the TPR paperwork and all of that. And the social worker asked if I would be willing to take over contact with the grandmother. Their only stipulation was that we could not have face-to-face -face contact and I could not give any details of the case. So I could give health updates, fun updates, pictures, any of those types of things to grandma. Um, but I was not allowed to meet with her and I was not allowed to give her any information about the case or what was going on case-wise. And so I said, sure, I would be willing to do that. And... um. 
I reached out. Well, actually, we both kind of reached out at the same time. Um, the grandma had sent us a Christmas card that Christmas, and I had sent a photo collage frame that had pictures of our little one, um, kind of from different events throughout the year, and I sent her a big envelope full of tons of pictures, um, from throughout the first year, I wrote a lovely letter. I included my phone number in there and I said, if at any time you want to know anything about him uh, or you want to know how he's doing or anything, here's my number. Feel free to text me or call me. And I believe the day that the package arrived at her house, she texted me the next day or that same day, I'm not sure, and told me how touched she was and how grateful she was. Um, that I'd reached out to her and that um, she was glad that he was in a great place. Now, I had met this person um, a couple times before. She had come with, uh, she had come to an appointment once and she had been there to, um, and she had been there at a couple of the visits um, during the initial, um, beginning part of the case. And so I knew who she was. I didn't really know her. Um, you know, we just had minimal, um, conversation with each other. There was like no, um, substantial, you know, information changed or anything like that. Um, and so she wasn't a 100% stranger, but she was still a stranger. I didn't really know her. Um, and for, oh, I would say maybe the next year, um, we had, um, contact with her through text and mail. She sent mail, um, for the holidays. She, um, actually in the mail sent, um, our kiddo had a different bio family member who had made a blanket for him, like crocheted a blanket for him. And she actually had sent that in the mail for him, um, for him to have, which we have kept for him. He occasionally sleeps with it if it's not in the laundry. Um, and so she, I was really grateful for that, that he could have something, um, that was from his bio family. Um, she has sent gifts for his Christmas, for his birthday. She sends cards on the holidays. Um, and things were going great. Uh, we were developing a relationship with one another. We talked maybe once, mm, maybe two to three times a month. We would talk with each other over text messaging, um, Every time we did professional photos, we would send her copies of the photos that we did. Um, and things were working out and things were going really great. Um, and then we received a phone call from our social worker saying that our contact with her has been revoked. So basically, we were no longer allowed to talk to her about our kiddo. And during this time... Um, we kept in touch. We talked about myself and my husband and our stepson and her family. Um, we just could not talk about our kiddo. Um, then again, at some point that, um, ability to talk about our, about the, about our youngest kiddo again was reestablished and things went, went back to the way they were. We could talk to each other again about him and give updates and all of those types of things. Um, when it got to the TPR, I had known um, his bio grandma pretty well over text messages. I mean, we had shared a lot with each other. Um, we knew a lot about each other's lives. Um, and so when she showed up at the courthouse for, um, TPR, um, it was nice to see her. Uh, she is such a very friendly person. Um, she is, uh, my mom says, my mom has met her and, you know, she says, you know, she's not anything that I would have expected, um, that she's such a nice and sweet person. And she really is. She is a great person. Um, 
she's very easy to talk to and we've had no issues with that at all. And so um, during TPR trial and that whole process, we got to know each other a little more face to face and then came his adoption. And when his adoption was over, and one of the first things I said to my husband was, well, he's ours, so we can decide whatever we want to do with him. And we don't have to get permission. And he was like, I know, it's a weird feeling. And I said, but, I said, his bio grandma met him, and the last time she saw him, he was a tiny little baby. I said, now she can finally meet him, and she can finally meet her grandson. And... Um, she kind of had asked us at one point what we refer to her as. Um, and I said, you know, your, your grandma, like you're his grandma. So we're going to call you grandma. That's what we refer to you as. And she was very touched by that. And she was like, I don't expect him to call me grandma. I said, but you're his grandma. And so, I mean, you can never have too many grandmas in your life. And so, um, Going forward, after adoption, we set up a time. Um, we did his adoption. We went on vacation the next day. The day after his <laughs> adoption, we were on our way to vacation. But when we got back from vacation, we set up a time for her to come and meet him. And um, we really just... Um, enjoyed um, a great time together. She came over to our house and they played in the living room together. He was a little shy at first, but he warmed up to her rather quickly. Um, and now we have a great relationship with her. At least I think we have a great relationship with her. Uh, she's very respectful of us and our rules and the things that we want for him. She has kind of included all of us in her family. So when I said that she sends him cards and gifts, she sends um, cards and gifts to my husband and I for Christmas. We've gotten gifts from her. She sends cards and gifts to our stepson who, um, you know, it was a little confused about the situation and how this all works in the first place. Um, but I feel like he maybe is beginning to understand now that he's almost 10. But she sends him gifts on his birthday. She sends him cards for all of the holidays that she sends things to um, our youngest for. And so she's really kind of included all of us in her family. And at this point, we have... Um, we contact each other once a week, maybe once every other week. Um, she has come over to our house several times. We have met her um, out on a hiking trail and we've hiked with her. We have met several of her other children. She has quite a few kids in her family and we've met a few of her other children. Um, a few of her other kids have briefly met our kiddo. Um, we don't really refer to them as aunts and uncles and um, anything like that quite yet. I think, you know, there's really not a relationship there with them. Um, our youngest doesn't really understand what aunt and uncle even is. Um, he just knows grandma and grandpa. And so... Um, we kind of have met some of them. I still, um, right now we still have zero contact with bio mom. We have zero contact with bio dad. Um, if either one of them reached out to me, honestly, I 100% don't know how I would feel, um, fully. I mean, I would be happy that they're reaching out and they want to know how their kiddo is doing. I hope someday in the future, um, we can all have a healthy relationship with each other so that our kiddo can see, um, you know, why choices were made, help him. I think it would just be beneficial for him to be able to process everything that's gone on in his life and why he is where he is and um, why he doesn't live with his bio parents like most people do. Um, and I think by all of us having a healthy relationship just helps for him. Um, I've also always said, you know, if something were to ever happen 
to him and he would need, um, you know, medical procedure done. He would need something medically that we can't give to him because genetically we're not related to him. Um, it is to our added benefit to maintain a positive relationship with his family, with his birth family, because they would be his only source or they could potentially be his only source of survival if anything like that ever happened or it ever came to those situations. And so at least knowing who his bio family is and, you know, knowing that if something were to happen, I could reach out to them and they would do all that they could um, to try to help him in that type of situation takes a lot of stress and worry off of my shoulders because that's one of the major things that I worried about going into the process of adopting him is especially because he's had a lot of medical issues and a lot of medical needs in the past from a genetic standpoint. You know, what if it has always been the question of what if he needs something medically that we can't give him because genetically he's not related to us. And so um, that eases my mind a lot knowing that we have those relationships established. Um, I am thoroughly happy that we have this relationship. Um, I'm hoping in, like I said, I'm hoping in the future he can know um, all of his extended family in his bio mom's family and his bio dad's family. Um, moving forward, I hope that we just continue to grow um, in our relationship with them and that everything keeps moving ahead positively. Um, his bio family that we do have communication with right now has been going through a lot and uh, my mom and I actually took uh, a meal over there for them so that they could um, have time together and not be stressed out about food and all of that type of stuff. And they could just, uh, make some great memories together. And so, um, it has been all positive for us. Um, I don't have anything really all that negative. I don't think I have anything negative to share about, um, in terms of our communication with his bio family at this point. Um, I'm pretty straightforward. I'm pretty much an open book. So I really don't have a problem answering a lot of the questions that are asked of me in terms of our kiddo. And like I said, um, because we get that respect from them in terms of um, us as being the parents, it's really easy for us to get along with them. So if you guys have any questions about communication with bio families and what that looks like, we don't have anything from our TPR post adoption. We have zero type of agreement at all. I don't even know if they do that in my area. I know that some places go into adoption and you know, they um, say you get one face-to-face -face visit a year or whatever. Um, we don't have any of that. Everything is left up to our discretion and what we feel comfortable with and what we want to do. So I really can't be helpful for that um, point of it. But if you're sitting there wondering if um, you should get to know the family you're from your kiddo, uh, my suggestion to you would be to get to know them without your kiddo first. So for us, it was several years of texting back and forth, getting to know each other, um, seeing each other at court and all of those types of things to make me feel comfortable allowing our kiddo to meet his bio grandma. Um, I imagine if at any time there became a situation where a bio parent wanted to see the see our kiddo, um, it would be much of the same. Um, I feel like there would be a lot of conversation back and forth between my husband and myself and that person um, before there's actually a meeting with our kiddo. Um, as our kiddo gets older, it also will need to be something that I can talk to him about and be open with him about. But at the time this all happened, you know, he wasn't really old enough to understand any of what's going on. He's only three and a half. He still 
um, doesn't have a clue about adoption or what any of that means. We have told him he's adopted. We have talked about how his one-year adoption anniversary is coming up, and we're going to have um, cupcakes and a balloon for that. And I honestly don't even truly know that he understands what it means that he's adopted. And so <laughs> we're kind of at a little bit of a disadvantage at that point um, in that that aspect. But it will come in time and in time he will understand. And I feel like it will be helpful for him to know that we do have this positive relationship going forward. If he has questions, um, he has somebody other than me he can ask his questions to if I don't have the answers. Um, and so that will be very helpful for him as he gets older. If you guys have any suggestions for other videos, make sure you comment below. I do have some special videos coming up that I'm not going to tell you about yet, only because I don't really know timing wise when it's going to fit in um, to when anything shows up on my channel. We are, when this is on my channel, we're probably will be on vacation. So, uh, there will be a lot of vacation vlogs coming up soon too. But until next time, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.